Dave the Potter by Laban Carrick Hill, illustrated by Brian Collier. Publisher, Little Brown and Company. To us, it is just dirt, the ground we walk on. Scoop up a handful, the gritty grains slip between your fingers. On wet days, heavy with rainwater, it is cool and squishy, mud pie heaven. But to Dave, it was just clay, the plain and basic stuff upon which he learned to form a life as a slave nearly 200 years ago. To us, it is just a pot, round and tall, good for keeping marbles or fresh cut flowers. But to Dave, it was a pot, large enough to store a season's grain harvest, to put up salted meat, to hold memories. Each one began out of clouds of dust, clotted clumps of clay, ground in the pug mill and carried wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow to Dave's spinning potter's wheel. With a flat wooden paddle large enough to row across the Atlantic, Dave mixed clay with water drawn from the Big Horse Creek until it was wet, stiff, and heavy. He threw the clay, sometimes 60 pounds at once, and nobody knew how or where it would land except for Dave. Dave kicked his potter's wheel until it spun as fast as a carnival's wheel of fortune. Like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat, Dave's hands buried into the mounded mud and pulled out the shape of a jar. He cha his chapped thumbs pinched into the center, squeezed the inside against his fingers outside. As the wheel spun round and round, the walls of the jar rose up like a robin's puffed breast, but only so far before its immense weight threatened to collapse. The jar grew so large that Dave could no longer wrap his strong arms around it. If he climbed into the jar and curled into a ball, he would have been embraced. Only then did he stop his potter's wheel and roll out long ropes of clay between his dry, caked palms. Dave mounted these coils of clay one by one on the half-finished jar. He ran his wet fingers along the sides to smooth it all together, kicking the wheel with the heel of his foot. The shoulder and rim shrugged upward as the jar took shape. Dave knew it was there even before he worked the raw mound onto his wheel. While the clay dried, Dave pounded wood ash and sand to mix a glass-like brown glaze to withstand time. But before the jar was completely hardened, Dave picked up a stick and he wrote to let us know that he was here. I wonder where is all my relation, friendship to all and every nation, August 16th, 1857. These are some works by Dave. It explains a little bit more about his, um, his history. It's called Dave, A Life. I wonder where is all my relation, friendship to all and every nation. Dave is an important American artist. His beautifully crafted jars stand out among the pottery of all time. His whimsical poems embody a simplicity and a deep emotional complexity that rivals Japanese haiku. These are remarkable accomplishments in themselves, but for Dave, who lived most of his life as a slave, there are even more, they are even more incredible. We have printed his poems here as they appeared on the pots, including the mistakes, as well as various marks such as dashes and plus signs. 
As Leonard Todd states in Carolina Clay, with so few words surviving from this gifted and unusual person almost alone in his role of slave's witness, it's important for us to get them right. Dave created his art in spite of a society that not only discouraged his brilliance, but also threatened him with death for expressing it. We know about Dave mainly because he wrote on his pottery. For long periods of time, Dave did not write on the sides of his pots because perhaps he knew it wasn't safe. He would sometimes just sign his name. He had only had a first name because slaves were not allowed to have family names like Hill or Collier. Other times he might just put a date. Once in a while he'd include a poem. Perhaps he wrote his poems for a specific person or maybe he would just do it for anyone who could read. Put every bit all between. Surely this jar will hold 14. July 12, 1834. This poem was written for one of the earliest pots that we know for certain that Dave made. It tells us that the pot can hold 14 gallons. Dave was one of only two known potters at the time who could successfully make pots that were larger than 20 gallons, sometimes as large as 40 gallons. To do this, he had to wrestle more than 60 pounds of clay on his turning wheel, a feat that required great skill and strength. Dave belongs to Mr. Miles, where the oven bakes and the pot boils, July 31st, 1840. Some of us know, some of what we know about Dave is buried in the shadows of all the lives of his owners. The first record of Dave dates to his 17th year. His name appears on a contract to borrow money for, to buy a house. Because his age is mentioned, we know that he was born sometime around 1801. We also learn that he was born in the United States, but we don't know where. A better thing I never saw when I shot off the lion's jaw, November 9th, 1836. We can suppose that Dave lived a life much better than that of most slaves who worked in the fields. As a potter, he had a skill that few black people were allowed to learn. Slaves were generally used for unskilled jobs. White slave owners feared that if their slaves learned skills such as blacksmithing or pottery, they might demand freedom and respect. For the same reason, slaves were not allowed to learn to read or write. How Dave learned may never be known. Another trick is worse than this. Dearest Mist, spare me a kiss. According to Leonard Todd, Dave lost his leg when he was around 35 years old. After that, his friend Henry, whose arms were crippled, kicked the potter's wheel for him. The details of the story in this book are taken from Dave's life before he lost his leg, but the focus on Dave is on Dave as a potter and a poet. With this in mind, the facts surrounding Dave's lost leg were not included. When you fill this jar with pork or beef, Scott will be there to get a piece. April 21st, 1858. We do know that some of Dave's poems leave a smile while others offer observations on his life. The sun, moon, and stars equal in the West are plenty of bears. July 29, 1858. Over the years, Dave's poems shared the pain of losing his family as well as his love for others. His words expressed his humanity, his compassion, and his own passion for life. According to Jill Butte Coverman in I Made This Jar, it is estimated that over seven decades, Dave made approximately 40,000 pots, but it is only through these few surviving poems that we get to know him. The last surviving jar inscribed with a poem is dated on May 3rd, 1862. This poem is a fitting epitaph for Dave. I made this jar all of cross. If you don't repent, you will be lost. Author's Note in 2003, I attended a conference on the Middle Passage organized by Dr. Lori Smith at St. Michael's College in Vermont. Toward the end of the day, I wandered into a talk be being given by Dr. Lisa Gale Collins, a professor of art at Vassar College. Her presentation was on African influences on African American art. At one point during her talk, she showed the image of a pot with a poem written on it. She very briefly described the pot, read the poem, I made this jar all of cross. If you don't repent, you will be lost. And explained that an African-American slave named Dave had made the pot. 
I left that conference with Dave's poems resonating in my head. For a year, I thought about Dave and his poem, and then one evening while I was watching PBS Antiques Roadshow, a pot by Dave appeared. As the antiques dealer described the value of the pot, I began to think more about Dave's poems. As I began to research Dave online, I discovered that there had been an exhibition of Dave Potts, Dave's Pots at the McKissick Museum at the University of South Carolina in 1998. The McKissick had published an exhibition catalog. Jill Butte Coverman, a graduate student in art history, had curated the show and collected in the exhibition catalog all the material known about Dave. At this point, I began to write my own poem to celebrate Dave's life and art. This picture book is an expression of my great admiration for and awe of Dave as an artist, poet, and potter. Laban Carrick Hill. Illustrator's Note. During my research for this book, I learned that the enslaved potter named Dave had lived in an area just outside Edgefield, South Carolina, Pottersville. And so I made my way down to South Carolina to see for myself the ground that Dave walked on. Once in Edgefield, I was directed to the studio of a local potter named Stephen Farrell. Mr. Farrell explained to me that Dave the Potter is a central figure rich in the history of pottery made by the, by the Carolinas. He then proceeded to throw a pot before my very eyes. He showed me an authentic jar signed and dated by Dave that was displayed in his studio. The watercolor collage images for this book depict Dave engaged in the step-by-step -step process of creating pottery, from extracting the clay from the earth to grinding, kneading, and preparing the clay for the wheel to applying the ash glaze. Finally, Dave handwrites a poetic verse on the outside of the jar, adding the date and his signature. Because there are no known visual references showing what Dave actually looked like, I based my illustrations on a model who I felt reflected the spirit of Dave. Throughout this book, certain images remind the reader that Dave was a slave, images of shackles and chains and slaves picking cottons in the field. In many ways, Dave's artistry may have served as his own glimpse of freedom and a way to of carving out a life under the brutal and dehumanizing conditions of slavery. Dave's noble jars and verses blaze through the ages and speak profoundly of dignity to our generation and beyond. Brian Collier.